Hey guys, so I was having an issue with my Unity game where when I wanted to pick like a single spawn point and I wanted units to just spawn in real nicely and in a nice circle and I was having an issue where they'd kind of spawn overlapping each other and then they would just sort of explode into the scene if multiple units were spawned and then some of them would shoot way into the air and then they'd stack up on top of each other and it was kind of amusing but it was pretty crazy so and I come from a StarCraft 2 mapping background so I was kind of hoping I could get them to just spawn in a nice little circle instead of you know exploding like they were <laughs> And in that game, all you have to do is just specify a point, and the more units spawn, they just keep forming a pretty circle. So um, I'll show you how what code I came up with to uh, kind of fix that problem, so it looks a bit nicer. It's not not quite as nice as the geniuses over at StarCraft 2, but you can see it looks way better than the initial. And some of it could also just be tweaking values, which you can see what works for your game you're probably going to, want to tweak this as well to work for you so let's go look at the code so first before we get into the code i wanted to give you kind of an idea how this works so we got our spawn point here and then what the code does is it'll check additional points in a circle with a radius around this point and when it gets to the end it'll go a little further check and check more points as well and at the further distances and it'll keep going like that and at each of these points it's going to check if there's any colliders already occupying that space and then um, if there are not it will spawn the unit then it'll go forward to the next point to check that if there is something occupying that space then it'll go ahead and go forward to the next spot and check that without spawning any units so that way we don't get units overlapping. And that way as you're spawning multiple units, because um, if you're spawning um, multiple units that frame, then uh, the physics system doesn't know they're there. So if you check that point, units that's already being spawned there, it won't know that when you do that. So this way we're always moving on to the next point in this frame. And that way we don't get units spawned at the same spot. And then also we're checking each time if there's any units already there. So that's kind of how the code works. All right, so this is the code that um, finds the point that we're going to check. And I really like this because you uh, just have to enter your spawn point, then the distance from it and how many degrees away. And that will be able to give you each of these little points, which I like to use. And uh, you know, StarCraft 2 had a nice function for that. That way I don't have to do deal with X and Y and stuff in my mind. This just is easier for flow for me. So um, I don't want to type out code, so I'll go ahead and pause here. If you need to, to copy all this down, we've got the offset vector that we're going to be finding. Just set it off at zero to start with and then uh, the X we do some math here that distance there's a sign thingy I'm a bobber I actually copied most of this on some really awesome forum poster so <laughs> that's that's a lot what a lot of coding is is being able to search for answers via Google or whatever else so that's the offset we get it there we got the X and the Z which uh, I'm doing a 3D game as you saw in the intro video. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see about the Y later. Um, center plus the offset vector. That'll give us each of these little points when we put them in. So then here is the rest of the code. So um. Let you know some of this stuff might not be needed for you. I decided I wanted to add this script to my personal utility script, so other scripts are calling into this. 
And basically what I'm doing here with this last time requested is I'm for checking in the code that if the spawn is the same at, at the same time as the previous spawn, then we're going to end up going to the next one rather than starting back at the start. So that's what I'm doing when I'm checking that the time is the same and also the spawn point is the same. So I'll be checking the spawn position. If that's the same and it's the same time dot time, then I end up going back to the starting point. Otherwise, I'm always continuing on in the circle. So that way I don't get two units spawning in the same frame at the same position. But you may not need that if you end up using this code directly in your spawning script. I also got the distance from the center, which is kept each time as we're going around the loop. Since I got stuff calling outside, I got to keep track of it as well. Again, you may, may or may not have to keep track of that. The iteration checks and I'm trying to remember what that is to be honest. Oh, that's the, um, that's the number of dots in this distance away from the center. So you'll see we have more dots and the farther it goes away. So there's more iteration checks. And then the degrees, which we'll keep again in there. And that'll go from zero to 360. If it gets to 360 or more, it'll go back. We'll advance the distance from the center and go back to zero. All right, so the first thing we do is we want to check around the spawn point all the colliders that are in that area. So I used a overlap capsule for mine. And I decided to use the spawn position, the bottom to be just a tiny bit above the ground in case I ever wanted to add the ground as a layer mask. That way it won't mess my stuff up later though. I think what's better is probably just as I'm gonna end up doing is just using a big open ground area to spawn instead of a lot of bumps. I probably won't do much spawning on like a mountain or anything like that instead so it probably won't end up mattering for me then uh so you also have to give it the top point of the overlap capsule so same thing but then just uh times two so it's a little up higher we've got the radius which is however far away you want it to you want a unit to be able to spawn from the center so i did a big number like 16 when i in my spawning script the layer mask so that would be for me your other units would end up going in there and just to show this off there is a fun little script thing i found online about bits and layer masks that's like super useful nice tangent to go on there but it tells you a lot about how bit math and whatnot works. So if you ever come across this graphic, you should totally use it. I didn't understand any of that until I got to it. So though I ended up cheating. I think mine was like layer eight. So I just put in 256 in my spotting script but instead of doing this stuff. Anyways. So that's the capsule. So this is where I do the checking for if the spawn position is the same and the time is the same, then we, well, I guess it's the opposite. If it's not those things, then we reset back to the beginning. So feel free to pause and copy that stuff down. All right. Um, just a little degrees check. If it's greater than or equal to 360, then I just reset it to zero. Otherwise, just keep it the same. Um, this was the last spawn position. 
setting some stuff yeah just this is again for those checks later you may not need those so this is the beginning of the loop there's actually too long a code I had to delete a lot of comments while doing this anyways just a nice while true we break out of it later you'll see so first we're doing the degrees check around the circle so once it gets past 360 we're going to end up going a little bit farther out so this is the um, test spot the spot we're going to be testing that we got from this thing up here that we talked about we put in the center the distance the degrees and it gives you a point that we then want to check so we start we assume a collision is not found if we end up finding a collision we'll set it true and that'll affect our thing later so if we end up not finding a collision we'll return this point here so to test for the collision this is um, an awesome YouTube video that this code is basically taken from but we got the center point and we go through all the colliders that we found from this overlap capsule up here and we just get the center we get the extent of the X the extent of the Z and then we do all this math for the left right lower upper this is just finding all the bounds of the stuff that we found inside the capsule and then we're going to be checking that against our test vector to see if the test vector is within those points and I mostly in the Y it's basically taken care of here because it only goes from point one above to the two above and otherwise so basically we don't really need to check the Y in here because it's basically taken care of in the overlap capsule so yeah check this is how we check to see if it's in the the X and the Z, the Z, I always want to say Z, but I usually say Z. So it is, we found a collision, and then we won't end up returning that point. We'll break out of the loop, and we'll go down here. Let's see, plus equals, yeah, so that's the 360 divided iteration checks, so just the new degrees that we'll be using for the next one turn the text vector so this is outside the degrees being so once the degrees gets more than 360 that's when we'll want to be going farther out from the distance from the center so let's reset that to zero um, I just hard coded 1.5 you could definitely make that a variable and maybe I will later but that's how much farther we're going to be at going out this way and then we'll do it again and again as long as we need to and then we are also increasing the iterations each time so uh, I did the distance from center times six. You can feel free to do whatever number you want there. So bigger number, the more points you'll have around the circle. Smaller number, the less points. So it's up to you. Then uh, we also do a check to see if this is greater than the radius we want to be spotting stuff in. So if it is, we break out of the loop and then I just end up returning the, the spawn position itself, which would basically be what I don't want, but it's kind of there as a safety net. So, yeah. It's kind of a little lazy in this tutorial, but because I didn't want to type out code and get a bunch of uh, wrong stuff, I'll get a nice spot where you can kind of pause right here and grab everything. And if you like these kind of tutorials where I just go through the code, let me know.
Now be sure to wishlist Monsters vs. Pals, which is what I made this script originally for. Thanks. Bye now.